In this experiment, I have an STM Nucleo F030 board, uh, which is generating SPI data. Uh, it's a three-wire SPI system, and it's connected to the Roden Schwartz RTB2004. We're going to see how we can decode the data coming in and out of this little board and uh, see how uh, it can be displayed and how the scope can be configured to ease the debugging process. All right, so I've already set up the uh, protocol menu uh, with bus one set to SPI three wire decoding enabled. The configuration is uh, chip select clock and data lines. Uh, with that, going into the trigger menu, I've set the trigger to frame start and that's kind of uh, how it works. You can set it from high to low if the chip select is chip select bar or something, you know, uh, it's inverted logic and so on and so forth. Um, it's pretty much doing exactly what it's supposed to do. Um, I am decoding the data. Let's go into the protocol menu once again. Uh, display setup is set to SKI. So SKI values are being displayed as uh, IPv1 and uh, uh, that's kind of working as it's uh, it's supposed to. In addition to that, um, something to note here is that I have one bus one and I have another bus two here. Um, going quickly into the protocol menu and clicking on bus two, you can see it's also set as SPI three wire and it's enabling decode. Uh, in the configuration, however, uh, the data line is set to D four as compared to the uh, configuration for from uh, the bus one. The reason is that the SPI uh, system kind of has one master out uh, slave in, so that's being displayed on bus one. However, the mass, uh, the slave out uh, pin, uh, it's a master in slave out pin, uh, it goes on to a different bus altogether. So it, there's no slave connected, so you can see there's a uh, zero 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 data across it. But yeah, uh, this is a very handy feature to buses so that I can have um, the ability to simultaneously see the data going out as well as data going in and I can select uh, if I want to disable one bus or and it can generate the bus table for that. So this kind of feature uh, really comes in handy. In Alright, I don't know what went wrong here but uh, I seem to have messed up something. As you can see any selection will give me zero history segments. If I do run, stop, capture, not ready, break, run, uh, it's not doing what it's supposed to. If I set it to two, uh, it's not, nothing is happening. Uh, going into the trigger menu, everything is right. I'm supposed to decode uh, the logic analyzer. There we go. Now that those are back, um, if I do stop, go into acquire where's the acquire menu acquisition menu sample and then they're back now if i set this to oh, oh if i set this to 100 kilo samples it should allow me 1456 history segments right so if i go into nx single it's still 31 i have to go into run then break and then go here and then it'll update so that's kind of flunky. I don't know if that's right, if I'm doing something wrong. But uh, again, if I set it uh, automatic, uh, yeah, it's set to one milliseconds uh, per division. So not messing with that. Uh, record length is if I set it to automatic, okay. Uh, it didn't reevaluate. I have to go and run, break. It'll jump back to 15 because it has to calculate and I guess, but if I go into manual mode, if I set it to 200 kilo samples, it should allow me 771 meg, uh, memory segments. Uh, nothing, cell 15, uh, run, break, now it goes back to its maximum. So that's kind of a bit, a bit flunky, but uh, the reason why I was doing this is uh, here. So what I've got is I've got the memory division set to one milliseconds per volt. Uh, protocol decoding is SPI, decode, enable, display setup to hexadecimal, all right, single run, and now it's going to capture 770 segments, right? Uh, let it do that, 
So 770 of these segments. Now it's completed that capture, it's sam uh, the capture is complete. Now at this point, without doing anything, I can go into it, I can really uh, scroll into these, seg uh, you know, every capture. So this is one capture, okay? So this is one segment. Now, <coughs> similarly, I can now go into the history and there is 770 of copies of these uh, not copies actually uh, versions of these in time so you can see each one is a bit different so I can go there in every one then I can scale into that and see what went wrong yeah the, the horizontal acquisition is set, set to the left point so it kind of uh, triggers and then it captures you can set the trigger to capture the front part and then it'll go fold on backwards uh, it's crazy. It just said I just said it's a left. Um, uh, now I can now scroll into these, scale into these. A one. You can see it's consecutive packets. So A one, A two, A three, A two, A three, A four, A five. Now I can go into the search, and now I can search for a particular pattern. Uh, in my case, what I've done is I've set up the search. Uh, where's the search menu? Uh, to track event uh, setup. So I've set it up as D2 uh, to go high and the width to be greater than 10 microseconds. So that's my enable it over there. Now I can search, for, search through these events. So this is the first event in the sequence. This is the second event. Uh, then the third event, I, it's kind of jumping automatically. If I go back into the search and if I deselect track event, then I can go back here to the previous one. See, it says there's the little marker, and if I click on the button, so it's A2. So the next event, click, that's A1. So go back here. I'm. This is supposed to be A3, I'm guessing. So there's A3, all right. Uh, there we go. Let's just change the scale on this thing. That's confusing. All right. Um, but it only allows you to search uh, through a particular segment. So I, next I can go into a different memory segment table. Now search uh, through the same event here. So first event is now 5E, going down, selecting as 5D, 5E, so on and so forth. So that's SPI decoded. A bit of a flunky uh, acquisition system is sometimes I guess but it, it works uh, uh, and the search thing just works through one segment at a time so it can be useful it can be I don't know um, for some people but uh, I would have wanted it to kind of search through all the segments of course that's gonna be a lot of data to crunch and uh, I don't know if it has that power. Even if you, if I scroll through this, if I just go run and pause, you can see that there's a. It's got all of those memory segments, and me going to have to search through each segment manually. Uh, that's going to be difficult. So mm, there you go. So segment, and then now selecting search, and then going into this. So. Ugh. So DC, DD, DE, so on and so forth. So eh, the search feature and the uh, decoding kind of can work in your benefit. You can, of course, uh, you can uh, set up a different event, for example, width of the pulses and then this and this and, and this channels and multiple complex triggers can be set up. But that's basically the gist of it. It can be useful, it can be problematic, but uh, if you want to really use the history um, uh, uh, capabilities nicely, just set this up to somewhere in, in a comfortable zone like 100 milliseconds or, and trust that its high sampling rate is going to get all of these segments. I'm just going to do one more trigger. Now 770 segments it's picking up, so it's going to trigger through all of them. The 770 segments just captured going into my uh, uh, history mode and if I 
slow down the speed, run. So 769, 768. You can zoom into this, it'll still decode. So D4, D5, uh, D6, so on and so forth. So a lot of data can be stored, lots of crunching. You can just capture this and store, say, but uh, you know, do that analysis of this uh, after the capture has been completed. So there's a lot of stuff you can do into this. And that's, I think, um, where the Ethernet and PC connectivity will actually come into play. It will be very useful when you're trying to, instead of using the touchscreen, poking around on the buttons and stuff like that, uh, the PC-based uh, user interface, on the Ethernet-based user, user interface is going to be very useful uh, to kind of uh, analyze all of the data and all of the segments that is actually stored. So completely worth it uh, if you have those kind of uh, embedded system requirements.